And when I walked down those steps, I slipped and fell. And that accident would change my life forever. Dr. A started prescribing me 120 hydrocodone. I started taking them. And then he said, okay, so you're gonna see me in, two, in a month. The addiction, the love for these pills happened so fast because within three weeks, before I went back to see the other doctor that he was referring me to for the therapy, he was writing the same script for me. And I was trying to figure out a way to get keep both scripts. So I, at this point, I didn't know what I was doing. I was taking 35 pills a day, which was six at a time, all day. Like if I didn't have them for a certain amount of hours, I would start feeling withdrawal. I know so many, so many people that raise kids that are in the church and they think, okay, my kid is, is a, has a 4.0 GPA. My kid has scholarships. But at the end of the day, I was one of those children that was raised up in a great home. And the audiologist said, you're going through some type of hearing loss. Are you taking any drugs? And I was saying to this guy, no, I'm not taking any drugs. I'm, I'm fine. One of my primary physicians said to me, he said, Miss Ellis, I can't prescribe him anymore. I can't prescribe you anymore, Lord said. That's why you went deaf. He was writing down notes because I couldn't hear. I just realized that I was at the end of the road because my name was being flagged so many times in all these different pharmacies. And I never took a painkiller since then at that moment. But that was August the 8th, 2010. I had my son Houston at 24 weeks gestation on the back of an ambulance. I was fully deaf. I got the first implant surgery on the, on the right side when he was two years old and I had never heard his voice. We have to tell our stories because there are so many pathways to recovery and people need hope and whole towns are dying and people need to see people like me that are striving and thriving. You can overcome it. Mm -hmm.